If you save, pardon me for using dollars, pesos. If you save $10, you hang out with 10 heirs. You save $100, you hang out with 100 heirs. You save $1,000, you hang out with 1,000 heirs. You save a million dollars, you hang out with millionaires. You save a billion dollars, you hang out with billionaires. You attract opportunity, associations, ideas, and investments the more you save. It's not how much you save, it's the habit of saving that matters. So begin to save. Begin to invest in yourself. The moment you pay yourself first, so will other people. The moment you invest in yourself, so begins other people. The moment you believe you're building something for a cause, so will other people. Pay yourself. Study finance. Read a book at least once a month on money. Because if you say you want to be wealthy and you devalue it so much that you never study it, then you live with conflict. Learn. Maybe someday I can come back and I can do a prosperity program and show people how to manifest wealth. Maybe. I one time lived on the streets and now I have blessed blessings. When it comes to family and relationships, know that every individual in the family or everyone you're dating has a set of values. Discover what their values are. Look at how they fill their space. Look at how they spend their time. Look at how they spend their energy. Look at how they spend their money. Look at where they're most organized, most disciplined. Look at what they think about most, dream about most, talk about most, converse about most. Look at what their highest goals are and when they're most inspired. Capture them, identify what's most important to them because that's who they are. And then master the art of learning how to communicate what you dream about in terms of their values and their language. If you help them get where they want to get in life, they'll turn around and help you get where you want to get in life. All relationships are built out of that law. Also, if you ever expect them to live outside that value system, you will feel you're betrayed. But nobody ever betrays you. You betray you by expecting something from others other than what their values are. Don't ever act like a victim of betrayal. Go look at what projections of unrealistic expectations you're putting on people. When you appreciate and love them for who they are, they turn into who you love. Also, just know that every woman wants to feel beautiful and every man wants to feel intelligent. Every woman has something of beauty. They may not like their thighs, but they may love their boobs. They may not like their belly, but they love their hair. They may not like their cheeks, but they love their eyes. Every woman has something that can tantalize. And a man, somewhere in their life, even though it's hard to find sometimes. They have intelligence. <laughs> it may be in business. It may be watching TV. It may be football. It may be farting. But somewhere they have intelligence. <laughs> Let them know that they're intelligent. A woman knows a man's intelligent when the man thinks a woman's beautiful. <laughs> when it comes to social leadership, just know that everyone here is a leader in whatever's highest on their values. 
Don't ever compare yourself thinking that somebody else is more of a leader than you. Find out where you are a leader. Don't deny it. Write down where you lead. Everyone is a leader to someone. And everyone is a student and a follower of someone else. But I say, humbleness to divinity is what provides you certainty for humanity. I'm not interested in subordinating myself to another human being, but I am interested in going inside my heart and soul and listening within and letting that voice and the vision on the inside guide my life. If you do, you're automatically a leader. My students who master the method and follow the process and the principles and apply the secret, they emerge as great leaders in the area of their highest values. So don't deny your leadership. Apply it. Recognize it. Find out where you already are. Don't deny it. The man who thought he wasn't successful was, but he wasn't honoring it. Don't be like that. Honor your, your unique leadership skills. It may be raising a family. It may be inspiring a couple of people at work. Find out what it is. Also, dig inside yourself and find out what the cause is in your life because the greater your cause, the greater your life. Find out what cause you want to contribute to in your life. Today, even though, told, even though I was told I would never read, write, or communicate, today I have a foundation, a human research and education foundation, that I'm now helping kids around the world in education. It inspires me, particularly teenagers, particularly 17-year-olds. Nobody has to get me up in the morning to work on that. Everybody has a cause. It's whatever's highest on your value. It's whatever's deepest in your void. It's whatever's most meaningful to your heart. Find some service and a cause that you can participate in. You will get more out of yourself with a cause than if you will without. And no, do not let one day go by without doing something of service for another person. Not one day. Even if you have to get up out of bed and go do it and come back. If you help other people get where they want to get in life, you will sleep well. One of the most inspiring things I get to do in my breakthrough program, which I do almost every weekend, is watch people open their heart and say thank you to themselves and to the people around them with tears in their eyes. I feel like one of the most blessed person on the planet because I get to be around authentic people every day. Find something and someone to serve. You will never be a lack of money if you find somebody to serve. There's no such thing as lack of jobs. There's people that aren't going out and finding needs. I was in Africa recently and I showed an entire township, the leaders of a township, how to increase employment. And it's working. It's never a lack of jobs. As I drive through your cities, I see job opportunities everywhere. It's a matter of sharing those ideas and acting upon those ideas. There's a service somewhere for somebody. Find it. You will sleep better. You will feel more fulfilled. And you'll have more wealth. And physically... If you're not doing what you love and loving what you do or working towards it or not linking what you're doing to what you love, you're going to drain your body and it's going to create symptoms. And your symptoms are there to give you guidance to go back and do what you love. If you go to bed in a state of gratitude, you'll have more vitality. If you get clear on your vision, you'll have more vitality. If you drink a lot of water, less other drinks, You'll have more vitality. Anything that causes volatility in your blood sugar, your fat concentration, your protein concentration, or any lipid concentration in your bloodstream tends to aid you. The universal solvent is water. Eat moderately. Eat light. Eat. Don't live to eat. Eat to live. And drink water and breathe deep and experience the inspiration and hold a vision of what you want your life to be and walk every day. 
dance, make love, in moderation 12 times a day. <laughs> Swim, hug and kiss. Try to make sure that you get at least five hugs a day. And spiritually, please understand that every individual is spiritual. I had a woman come to me, she says, Dr. Martini, my husband's not spiritual, he's material, I'm spiritual. <laughs> I said, oh really? She says, yes, I'm into spiritual things. And I said, why are you spiritual? She said, because I do yoga and I meditate and I chant and I contemplate my navel and I read spiritual books. And I said, and why do you call him material? Because all he does is work and make money and he's a materialistic. I said, so he's like a disowned part of you. Do you work at all? She says, no. So he is basically working to take care of your, you? Yes. What is his business? He has a tech firm. How many employees? 200. How many people does he serve? Millions. I said, let me get this straight. Your husband works every day, manages 200 people, provides them jobs, helps them raise families, helps them go to school, helps them inspire them, gives them new opportunities, serves millions of people, makes income, provides you money so you can contemplate your navel and sit by yourself and chant and you are more spiritual than this man? <laughs> Everybody is spiritual according to their values. Beware of boxing in spirituality according to your own values or according to belief systems or institutions or dogmas because where is God not? Where is spirit not? It's universal. I love that question. I, my wife passed away about almost three years ago, and so I got to watch the transformation. Uh, I have a methodology that's part of the Demartini method on how to deal with remorse, bereavement, grief, sorrow, and loss. See, when you're infatuated with something, you fear it's loss. When you resent something, you fear it's gain. The inability to adapt to a changing environment because of infatuation and resentment will cause stress and the aging process. Stress and aging is a response of the body to let us know we have an imbalanced perspective and to teach us to look for the balance of love. When we do, we don't have the remorse and we don't have the uh, elation. We just have presence and transformation. I don't believe there's death or life beginning or end. I think there's transformation. And as the laws of conservation said, nothing is created or destroyed, it's just change in form. So when somebody passes away, I ask you to write down every trait that you imagine is now missing. And then look in your life, who is emerging it? You'll find out that surrounding around you are people that are emerging all those traits. And when you can honor that in all the people around you, you'll feel the presence that's ever present and it will change form throughout your whole existence. And you'll realize that no one's ever gained and lost, they're just always present. Honoring that present and not being infatuated with one form or resentful to another form sets you free to adapt and feel the presence of the people you love. If you're infatuated with it, it runs you. If you're resentful to it, it runs you. If you have a balanced perspective, you love it. And when you have love for it, you allow it to come and go and to transform. When you really love somebody, you love them for who they are, whatever form they take. And they'll take on many forms throughout the existence. Don't ever underestimate the power you have within your mind and your heart because uh, never underestimate the significance of one individual or group of individuals for changing the world because, in fact, that's the thing that changes the world. And the world that's changing is not for the better. The world is changing is for us to learn more about love.